Mmm, I love the smell of la révolution in the evening. The French have had enough. They're kicking off big time. As Emmanuel Macron, who is the French president, and also the poster boy of centrist dance the world over, as he attempts to hike the pension age from 62 to 64, up to three and a half million people, that's about one in every 20 French people in France itself, um, have taken to the streets. It's gotten so bad that a visit by King Charles III has been cancelled or postponed. I mean, to be fair, from historical experience, it's not necessarily a great idea for a monarch to swan around France while its population are feeling a little bit on the agitated side. Uh, but let's not let's not lose our heads. Seriously, though, it does seem as though the French authorities have actually gone. Maybe having a king in full pomp while there's a mini uprising taking place isn't necessarily the wisest or most astute of moves. Now, hundreds of thousands have marched through uh, Paris. The town hall in Bordeaux, who has set on fire, and the police have been firing tear gas pretty liberally at protesters. Now, firefighters are amongst those who've been marching for their pensions. Vast crowds have assembled across the country. The Trade Union Federation, the CGT, have taken a decisive role. There's been a pretty joyous and determined atmosphere shown at many of these protests. Riot police, meanwhile, have been dishing out brutality on a pretty gruesome scale. Now, I want to put a challenge to all of us. Let's just look at the UK, shall we? The UK already has its state age, its state pension age rising to 67. Not a peep. Nothing. Not even a whimper. Well, the French are, they're kicking off at their pension age being hiked from 62 to 64. They've got masses of people on the streets kicking off in quite a, quite a courageous and revolutionary way. Now, it gets worse for us in terms of how this reflects on us because our pension, let alone the pension age, our pension sucks in comparison to many other rich countries. So 4.7% of our GDP, that's our gross domestic product, our economy, is spent on pensions. You can add 1.4% 1, um, 1 for pension tax relief on top of that. In France, the total is nearly 12%. That's how much they spend on pensions. Now, we're lower than Germany, Italy, Denmark. 15.5% of our pensioners live in poverty compared to less than 4.5% in France. So we've got lower pensions and a higher pension age, the worst of both worlds. Now... The French are kicking off, so why aren't we? What's all this about? What does this say about, I don't know, how we've landed in the mess we're in? I'll come on to that, because what this brings to me, I, I think about this tweet a lot. It was a tweet that a journalist uh, sent out last summer, and it showed that France had practically the lowest cost of living increase for its poor citizens than almost anywhere else in Europe, Whilst in Britain, the poor suffer a much bigger cost of living increase than France. Um, and the rich here are far more protected uh, in comparison to the poor. So the rich cost of living increase is much lower than it is for the poor. That's class war, by the way, um, summed up in a graph. Now, he asked this journalist another one of those charts, which makes you wonder why the French are always so angry with the government. But maybe just link the two facts. That's the whole point, isn't it? It's the fact the French are so determined and so prepared to fight back and stand up for their rights. That is why you end up in France with a lower cost of living increase for the poor, because the government are scared of its people, or more scared of the people than the British government is. The British government think pretty wisely, we can do quite a lot of shit, and this lot, they're going to just roll over and take it. That doesn't happen in France. In France, if the French president, if the French government want to pick a fight and roll back the rights and freedoms of its population, they know what's going to happen. And it's going to get pretty grim for them if they decide to do that. Now, before I get kicked off YouTube, in these comments, I want to make it very clear. I'm not calling for or condoning violence. 
want to make that very clear. I'm a strong believer in peaceful civil disobedience, which roughly translates as breaking the law without hurting people. That is a great tradition in this country. And I do want to make that clear. There is a tradition in this country of people fighting back. And I'm going to talk about that because many of the rights and freedoms that we have won in Britain we're not one because the rich, the powerful, woke up one day and th thought, oh, I'm feeling generous. I'm going to give women the vote for a bit of a laugh. It's because women, the working class, people of colour, LGBTQ people throughout history have been prepared to fight back and often been demonised for doing so. Because now often people look back at the suffragettes and go, oh, everyone loves the suffragettes. Not at the time they didn't. They uh, actually suffered, you know, they were regarded as ter terrorists and, and, and violent anarchists. Um, who were treated abominably by the British state. You know, they were thrown into dirty prison cells with tubes forced down their noses. Everyone wants to be on the right side of the suffragettes. Everyone wants to be on the right side of protesters throughout history. Um, but at the time, those were very unpopular, just as climate protesters today are often very unpopular. But I doubt when we're suffering in three decades' time some of the worst effects of the climate emergency. I doubt people are going to be looking back at those climate protests and thinking, oh, they went a bit far, didn't they? Just putting things in perspective. I do think it is striking that there is a there is a mood of profound discontent in British society, even though it hasn't manifested as it in the same way as France. So a Comres poll last year found that nearly half of 18 to 24-year-olds thought the cost of living crisis meant that rioting was justified. And that rose uh, that was also, sorry, over 40% for 34 to 44-year-olds. So that's, you know, often basically people with kids. Now what what that says, and that's not for me, I'm not condoning writing. I'm not calling for writing. I'll keep making that clear before I get banned from YouTube or arrested probably under our authoritarian legislation. But if a democracy is unable to satisfy the basic needs of its citizens, then it brings mass unrest upon itself. I mean, Martin Luther King aptly observed that a riot is the language of the unheard. He was himself demonised at the time, by the way, on the basis that he was stoking up unrest and, all the and, and, and so on and so forth. Now, it's true France is a self-consciously revolutionary society, so the sovereignty of the people is sanctified. Liberté, égalité, fraternité, that's the whole point. So that gives a legitimacy, I suppose, to, to these forms of popular unrest. In May 1968, uh, there was a brutal crackdown on rebellious students, and that triggered a general strike and a mass revolt. And they actually genuinely feared revolution at the time. President Charles de Gaulle fled the country, um, and only the dissolution of the National Assembly prevented a revolutionary overthrow of the government. Um, but actually, you know, they were forced to make drastic concessions, um, including a massive hike in workers' wages. So it showed that fighting back worked. Now, a key negotiator in the Grinnell agreements, which gave those hike in wages, was a guy called Jacques Chirac. And nearly three decades later, as president, he also became the target of popular wrath because his government sought to slash social security, freeze public sector wages and raise the retirement age of railway workers. Uh, they, they were adamant they'd stand their ground, but after weeks of mass strikes, workplace occupations and popular protests, they were forced into retreat. Now, Macron may think that his, you know, triumph in the presidential elections gave a mandate to impose his economic policies. He thought so in 2017. He introduced a carbon tax, which goes against the principle of a just transition, um, in which you don't put the burden of uh, environmental protect of, of stopping the climate emergency on the, on the backs of the poor because you won't get consent it won't work in any case that led to a social explosion the gilet jaunes and they won um again similar you know protests in the have passed have have, have have forced him into retreat on the pension age issue which is now revisited but this isn't culturally ingrained there's nothing about the british that makes us more docile and the french you know more revolutionary there is cultural background you know, but part of it is that we don't know our own history. We had a revolution 150 years before the French did, in which King Charles I suffered a pretty grisly fate, I'm not going to lie. Not calling for that. Don't get me arrested for treason <laughs> thrown in the Tower of London. But the point is, you know, we had then the revolution. We had at the time the levellers and the diggers, who were revolutionary movements in the 17th century. We had the Chartists, who were the first great working class political movement in the world in the 19th century, who fought... Um, for democracy to allow working men to have the vote. Um, we've got a great history of people fighting back. The poll tax movement, which brought down Margaret Thatcher, you know, for, for example. And um, these are great moments that we need to reclaim. So it's not enough to just, as I start this video by doing, by going, thinking, oh my God, look at the French, look at what they're capable of. Why don't we do the same? We've got to stop thinking, oh, that's just what the French do, because that's how it's kind of portrayed. This is the French thing. But actually, we have a history that we should be proud of. And I do think, given the battery of attacks that we've had the longest squeeze in wages 
appropriately since the Napoleonic War, uh, the decimation of our public services, the NHS in a state of virtual collapse, you know, what does it take for people to take to the streets and yes, use peaceful dis civil disobedience as our ancestors have done, which gave us the rights and freedoms that we often take for granted. So let's learn from the French and also learn from our own history because if a government is not scared of its own people, that's when things become dangerous because that's when a government thinks it can get away with anything. But if a government is scared of its people, they will think twice about attacking our rights and our freedoms. And that's something to learn from. Please like, subscribe, and do support us on patreon.com forward slash I'll see you in a bit.